All right, here we are, guys, back for a tutorial here, Sunshine Glades, one of the new par threes. And uh, what we're going to go over here is all the different shot types. So get this in. Of course, this is going to be from the third T deck in Tour 11. So there is the different winds we could possibly get here. Now, one of the things that ends up happening here is they have this with the power three ball. The line here kind of goes down the center of this fairway. We're very, very close to the center of the fairway. So it might actually be almost a little bit more towards the front half, but that's with, you know, power three, power four ball of where the line's going to fall for a uh, for the min driver there so the way that you need to play this kind of changes based on uh, the wind at hand so what I'll usually try to do is the driver shot so let's talk a little bit about that and you know I'm assuming that you'll have either Thor hammer you'll be coming in with Thor hammer um, probably six or seven. Uh, you, you won't need a six or a seven here though. You could get away with as early as a uh, three here, no problem. Um, same with a pock, we'll just put down these, you know, we really don't need very advanced drivers for this more times than not. So um, very early drivers are okay with this. Similarly, you know, we can put extra mile right below here. I'm just assuming that, you know, with Tour 11, you're not going to be able to do any other clubs because distance is so important in this tour. So, um, you know, even these clubs that I'm putting, you're going to be kind of testing your bounds if you don't have a Pac 4 and probably Thor 4. So you might want... Uh, you know, to make sure that you definitely have some length, you'll definitely be using Kingmakers probably most of this tour either way. So looking at this, let's take a look at the spin for these shots. So let me, you know, doesn't matter which club that I use. But let me just, you know, kind of put in these placeholders. The driver shot is going to be uh, right around three to three and a quarter for a side spin. For the tailwind, you're going to need to start cranking that up a little bit. Well, no, actually, let me get rid of that. You don't even, I, I, I don't even usually use that shot. You could probably get away with it for, you know, maybe slight tailwinds, very, very minimal tailwinds, like, you know, here or so. That's kind of your bound. So we'll be going for just the headwind cases here. And in the headwind case, we'll be looking at probably around uh, maybe three here, possibly to maybe 2.75. So like 2.75 to three here. And here you're probably looking between two and two and a half. It really just depends on... Um, you know, the severity of the um, miles per hour that they give you. So it's kind of going to be a range depending upon, you know, however much they give you there as is how much you're going to go. And in the tailwind case, we're going to use some woods. So looking at the woods, we'll probably want ideally sniper just for the uh, extra app uh, accuracy and whatnot. Uh, you'll need at least... A minimum seven. However, you know, it, it's really hard to place those early clubs. Your min line's probably going to be down here in the water. Um, with the, like a sniper seven. So you won't quite have the range to be able to start your setup here. Um, but you can still play the shot with very early clubs. You know, Guardian two. I could see you getting away with. Same with Hammerhead. We'll just put a four on. 
and the cat one, for instance. So here's going to be kind of shot number two. So with this shot here, um, we're still going to choose the same land spot. And let me just show you kind of where I'm kind of setting up. It's usually right around here, right on the upslope. About a couple rings over, I'll try to land here, here, and then just kind of roll it out after those hops. And, you know, ball guide offset and being able to... Uh, Play wind effect is going to be, you know, definitely the most important thing that you can do uh, to have success on this hole. And what I'll usually use, of course, you know, these ones back here were backspin values. Um, these are also going to probably be backspin values. I'm supposed to put the purple. But it's going to be much, much less that you're going to need here. Even in this tailwind situation, usually in the mega tailwind, I was using maybe two. And you might only need to use maybe 1.5 for the backspin. And these are for your woods. So these are the wood cases where you'll be using the tailwind. And as I mentioned, you might have to visualize, you know, already being played five rings. So for instance, if your max lines down here, which it very well could be, you'll have to basically look at your bullseye target, which is somewhere in here and say, oh, well, okay, I've already moved five rings. Um, and I'll have to just start my adjustment from the white ring for instance, because my bullseye target won't even be able to reach the fairway. So let's take a look here. We got the side wind, we got the headwind, and we got the tailwind. So with the side wind, we're usually first off talking about the driver case. So we're only going to do these woods on those tailwinds. So with the side case, we're just going to play min club. Pretty much spot up. It's almost perfect. The only other thing that you'll need to factor in from Min Club is wind effect. In the headwind case, I play much closer to mid club um, with the potential to go to as much as max, depending on how strong it is. So it's going to be somewhere in between this range. It's just all based on the severity of the headwind. There's even times that I might even go into max plus 10. It would have to be, you know, 13 in the face, but there's potential for that to happen. So it's going to be somewhere be between this span, between mid club and max club, even potentially max plus 10. Just the severity and the angle is going to kind of dictate where you'll be in terms of for that shot. And with the tailwind case, this is the wood case. So when we're hitting the woods, we're going to go pretty much about max plus 20 to potentially plus 25. And if it's very, very strong, you could probably even go plus 30, to be honest with you. So let's say you got it pointed straight towards the hole and it's 12 miles per hour. I don't see any reason that you couldn't go, um, but keep in mind that you've already gone X number of rings. So um, let's say you're six rings short of the fairway, for instance, and you have to assume, okay, I've already moved six, or maybe say you've already moved eight rings to make sure that you land centered on the fairway, for instance. So you'll basically be like, okay, I've already moved eight rings. I still need to move eight more for a total of 16. So, you know, that'll kind of get you in the ballpark of what you need to do there. So hopefully that helps for this whole guys. Good luck and see you guys on the next one.